Today's video is brought to you by Assiniboi Downs Gaming and Event Center. And be sure to tune in to Trust the Profits Live Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern for Monday Night Lights, hosted by Matthew DeSantis. Salutations and welcome, friends. I'm your host of this episode of Cap in the Card. My name is Matthew DeSantis, and you can find me on Twitter at the handle at Failed to Menace. Welcome to an Assiniboia Downs specific episode of Cap in the Card, where I go race one through seven, give you my top pick, my top value play for Monday night, June 26th at Assiniboia Downs. Of course, like the promo said, make sure to tune in on Monday night, eight o'clock Eastern, to enjoy the live stream here on Trust the Profits. I host. We have a slew of people from both the Trust the Profits family as well as horse racing guests from across the industry who come on, join me. We get you ready for the Staple Duel Contest. We talk live betting, handicapping. We're there the entire night from 8 o'clock all the way until the end of the final race, which is usually, usually around 11, 1130. Come hang out with us. We show the stream. The good folks in Assiniboia have enjoyed partnering with us. We let you hear Kurt's great calls on all the races. So it's a lot of fun. Make sure to check it out. Now make sure to press that subscribe button as well here on YouTube to get all of our great content, whether it is live streams, handicapping episodes, horse racing news, and more. Finally, press that like button and let me know. You gotta let me know. Gotta, gotta juice up the comments here. Gotta let me know. Who you, who's your best bet on Monday night? Who are you looking at and going, that's that's my ace right there. That's my guy or my girl. That's who I got to get across the finish line first. Uh, always like to hear uh, from the fans, from the viewers, who is your best bet? Okay, well, the premise of this is pretty simple. If you've never tuned in before, like I said, I just go race one through seven, giving my top pick, my top value play. Now, from a value play standpoint, sometimes that value play is, I like this horse to run underneath at a big price. Other times it is, I think this horse is a legitimate win threat <clears throat> and a horse that you could vi via, you know, uh, use, uh, is viable to use horizontally or is just a straight up win bet, but is a little bit more of a price and hence maybe a little bit more of a risk, but that I really like in this particular spot. All right, well, let's dive into cap in the guard. And let's dive into race number one. And this is one of the exciting things. We're getting to that time of the season, folks, where Cinnaboya Downs is stretching out. We're getting these horses running longer and longer races. And that is the case, obviously, here in race number one. This one is going seven furlongs as a $10,000 optional claimer for three-year-olds and up. And when you're looking at that sort of thing, it's, I always think, very important to look at how have these horses performed traditionally going this distance. And how have these horses looked handling a longer distance? So where do I end up going? Well, I end up going to the number six horse as my top choice, Gray Admiral. Listen, Rick Wise, uh, the trainer, Antonio Whitehall, obviously a very hot jockey right now up there, although has cooled off a little bit, was winning at about a 30% clip a couple weeks ago. That's down to 23%. Had a little case of seconditis a couple weeks ago. Uh, so you know, uh, Whitehall is still very, very good. Uh, don't get me wrong. And it's still a jockey that I want to use here. This is actually a son of twirling candy. Uh, so I, who's a son of candy ride as a result. And, and so this was a horse that had some expectations in the beginning of his career and actually started that career out on the West coast at Santa Anita and Del Mar, uh, before coming to turf paradise and golden gate and eventually century mile. And now Cinnaboya. <clears throat> but ran a really good race last time out at five and a half furlongs. <clears throat> and this horse is 0 for 4 winning at seven furlongs as a distinct distance. But if you look, this horse has run well at a mile. This horse has run well at a mile and a 16th. In fact, won a 62.5 starter allowance at optional uh, at a mile and a 16th last year at Century Mile. Uh, so this horse can absolutely do the distance. This horse, if you walk, go back and watch that replay of the June 12th race, <clears throat> which was a very similar spot, optional claimer 10,000 ran a very close up second and was coming at the end of that race and was making up a lot of ground. I have a feeling that this is a horse that's going to like stretching out a little bit more. You go back, you look at those speed figures from last year at Century Mile. As the season got underway, those speed figures kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Certainly, you know, the 69 buyer speed figure would be more than enough to win in this race. Uh, so this is a horse that from a speed figure standpoint really does have a little bit of an edge, I think, in this particular race. And there are just some other question marks. You know, there was a horse... Uh, 
It's a boy, the number four horse coming off a long layoff, coming in from Canterbury. That's a horse that's run in tougher spots before, but is really only run on the dirt once. And it was a very forgettable effort. So, you know, I, I couldn't really get there on that horse. Uh, you know, there were a few others that I thought were interesting. Um, but ultimately, like I said, I thought that, uh, the connections there with gray Admiral made a lot of sense here. And I think he's going to like the stretch out. So, um, that's going to be my top pick. Now, from a value play standpoint, I really do like the number four, two, Persibility. And I would say this is a viable win threat as well. And if you're looking to try to beat the favorite, I think this horse makes a lot of sense. Two for three winning at seven furlongs. So already that checks certainly a box. Comes off the bench to run a 60 buyer speed figure. One of the highest speed figures this horse has run over the last honestly calendar year or to calendar two years going back earlier in its career it did run a 72 once before but by and large over the last year this horse runs 60 61 is kind of the high end this horse comes off the bench and runs a 60 that was i thought particularly impressive finished fifth that day uh but that was in a, in a pretty good optional claimer 10 going five and a half furlongs and that was against horses like Sir Deputy and Hard West, who I, I think are pretty nice horses. Uh, has running up against some horses like McKaygee, uh, who I think was is a pretty good horse and was in very good form last year, Crown Royal, uh, and was able to you know run in some stakes level races last year and run competitively at this optional claimer ten, going seven furlongs. I, I think this horse makes a lot of sense. It feels like he's actually in a little bit of a better spot than he was last year off the bench. I know the connections are not. Uh, you know, a little white hot right now, but this is one who I think is just run against a little bit better competition actually in the past. And I think get the job done here in this uh, spot at six to one, you're getting a little bit of a price. So Persibility is the one that I'll be using uh, as a value play might put a little bit of a win bet on this horse, but definitely one I like. Well, let's move to race number two on the card and we're, we're going to keep routing here, folks. We're going to do a $5,000 claim. We're going seven and a half furlongs for three-year-olds and up. And here I'm going to go against the favorite. And honestly, this is one where I really, really, really like the number one runway hurricane. Nine to two for Tiffany Husbands. Now, you're going to see my value play up here on the screen. This is a horse I would strictly use underneath. I do not view Carolina Gent as a horse that I would want to use up top in any way. It's a little bit of a crazy idea on my part. It's a little bit of a throwdown field, but it's just a horse I have a feeling is sitting on a halfway decent race. And if you're playing something like a trifecta would be worthwhile including. But let's go back to talking about Runaway Hurricane. Listen, it's got the inside rail. I think that's always important in these seven and a half furlong races, seven furlong races. When you're going two turns out of Cinnaboya, you want to be on the inside rail. Additionally, this is a horse came back from the layoff uh, last time out on June 12th and really was up against the track more than anything else, was running on a speed favoring track and made up ground and made up a lot of lengths, came running late to a horse named Frank's Reload, who's a very good horse, Terra Tattoo, not a bad horse, and Runaway Hurricane was the only one really making up ground in that race. And I think you're going to see a big step forward from a speed figure standpoint. That's what this horse traditionally does. First to second time out, you always see a big jump. From debut, recorded a zero buyer speed figure, to recording a 27 second time out. Now, last year, you go, look, first off the bench, records a 26 buyer speed figure in almost the exact same type of race. Next time out, records a 36. So you see that jump. Last time out, recorded a 37. I think we see a jump up for this horse second time off the bench. So that's where I'm going to be going as my top pick. I just really like this horse. I think Chow aboard, this horse makes a ton of sense. It's got a nice late speed. And I think if you look at some of these other horses, there's reasons to play against some of the favorites um you know i think you look at a horse like uh, my christian boy the number six my boy christian i should say that was a horse i would have expected to run better the last time out and actually regressed a little bit was on a speed favoring track was up on the lead and was losing ground and that was going six furlongs as opposed to five so stretching out didn't look particularly good um Great Realization is a horse, the number seven horse, one for 25 lifetime winning. 
<clears throat> hard to bet that horse, I think, as a win bet in this spot and over 15 at the distance. So those are your other two major players in this one. And then you have obviously the number two arrogance as well, who's a a big time horse, uh, you know, and has run some good races at Century Mile, but you go back and hasn't really, you know, over five at Assiniboia Downs. <clears throat> And I don't know, you go back and look at how this horse ran seven furlongs at Century Mile, didn't run particularly well. Now, that might have been in a tougher spot for sure. Comes back, you know, is doing the class drop now, uh, second back. But I, I just have a feeling I, I'm going to try to beat this horse. I, I really do like the the number one hurricane, a runaway hurricane. So the number five horse, Carolina Gent. Listen, this is a total shot downfield. <clears throat> this is a horse that is third back on the form cycle. This horse broke its maiden going eight and a half furlongs, a mile and a 16th at Hastings. <clears throat> you know, he had a legitimately tough trip last time out, had a really tough start. You look, he was sandwiched between horses, banged hard, and was really, before they could even get started, was already about 10 lengths back. And guess what? He finished about 10 lengths back. He made a little bit of a run um, around the far turn and then just kind of flattened out a little bit, uh, you know, because he had used up a lot of energy to try to get up there. That was in the same race that runaway hurricane came out of in terms of Frank's reload and Tara tattoo winning that race. I think this horse actually will do better going two turns. Uh, I think that's a better start. This is not a very quick horse out of the gate, uh, but this is a horse that has good late speed. I have a feeling that this is a horse that will come running late and you're going to see, maybe come up for a piece. And so Carolina gent 25 to one, I'm going to be using this horse underneath in race number two. Well, let's go to race number three. And that is of course the golden boy stakes going six furlongs for three-year-olds. And this is a really nice field Two really, I think uh, there's three really nice horses in this race too, that I'll talk about. Uh, my top pick here definitely is my top pick, but I, what I would say is my value play. This is one where my value play is a horse that I would absolutely encourage you to think about placing a win bet on. Um, my confidence level in this race is about a you know 38% or thereabouts, you know, if I had to assign an arbitrary number. I like Cuban Cobra, don't get me wrong, but there but I really like Saxon Saga as well. I think this horse might get the setup and, and uh, might really benefit from the type of trip that it ends up getting. But this is going six furlongs. Like I said, this is uh I think a really interesting race, but I'm ultimately gonna go to Cuban Cobra. As my top choice, this is a horse that's invading from Century Mile, but has done this before and has come and absolutely blitzed the field last year and winning the Winnipeg Futurity uh, last year as a two-year-old coming in from Century Mile to win at Assiniboia and did so easily. It's a horse with a lot of good speed, and this is a horse that I, I am a little worried that if this is a horse that gets headed he kind of gives up. The thing is, he doesn't get headed very often. He doesn't really get past when he's on the lead. The question is, can he rate? He did that a little bit in the Winnipeg Futurity because there is some concern that the horse on the inside rail, Blazing Bow, could really send hard with Chavian Chow aboard. And that's a horse that might just try to get a neck in front of Cuban Cobra. But again, breaking from the rail, that's always a little dicey. Sometimes those horses, even if they're fast, get shuffled back pretty quickly. And then the other one to consider is the number seven, Chicago's Gray, who's the second choice. This is also a very, very fast horse breaking from the far outside. Again, what's Jorge Correno going to do here? That's a horse that, again, kind of needs the lead in a lot of ways. But I do think Cuban Cobra is just a legitimately fast horse. I mean, you look at some of these workouts that he's been recording at Century Mile. I mean, last time out, 58 and four, five furlong bullet. I mean, that's that's some legitimate speed that he's showing right there that you just don't really see on the workout track at a Cinnaboya. So Gonzalo Anderson, uh, Dane Nelson up on the mount. That's one. I just, you know, this horse has basically been running nothing but stakes races since breaking its maiden and, you know, has never finished out of the exacta four wins and six career efforts, three for three winning at this distance. A lot to like there with Cuban Cobra. Now I mentioned Chicago's gray and I mentioned blazing bow. Those are two speed horses, obviously, Cuban Cobra also wants to be up there on the front end. This brings me to Saxon Saga. This is a horse that might just get the setup. And at four to one, Wendy Anderson's horse with Ronaldo Cumberbatch aboard, I think this horse sits the perfect trip. I think this horse sits right behind the speed, has some nice early speed of his own, but sits behind the speed and then comes running late. And I have a feeling 
This is a horse that maybe there's a little bit too much speed on the front end, and this is a horse that can really pass them coming down the stretch. We see this happen sometimes uh, at a Cinnaboya where horses really get leg weary in the stretch, and all of a sudden you see somebody just flying up the center of the track. This is one where I can totally see that happening. Is a horse that was running at Golden Gate and, uh, you know, for Ed Mosier Jr. and is two for three winning at six furlongs and then comes up to a Cinnaboya, runs a really nice 65 to speed figure, then comes back and finishes second to Chicago's Gray in that primetime TV stakes last time out. But again, I, I think the setup is going to work a little bit better this time for Saxon Saga. So four to one, I think that's a legitimate win threat. And you're going to get more of a price because people are going to go to Chicago's Gray and Cuban Cobra. And I don't know what price you're going to end up on in Saxon Saga, but it's going to be an honest one. One I would definitely be interested in. All right, well, let's move to race number four on the card. And let's go from the stakes competition to a $5,000 claimer going five furlongs for three-year-olds and up. And this is where I'm going to take my shot downfield. And you probably are not surprised that it's with a horse jockey by Antonio Whitehall. I also like another horse jockey by Jorge Correno. This is one where I really like some value in this uh, number four race. I think you can get a big price in this race, potentially, if you play your cards right. So <clears throat> this is one where... You know, I go through and I look at the competition and, you know, the number one horse livery man is kind of stuck on the rail, doesn't have great speed, is probably going to get shuffled back. And, you know, it. I just I, I have some questions about that horse, uh, especially considering he's got speed breaking to his outside in Pioneer Town. This is a horse again, you know, broke its maiden last two times out ago, comes and runs in a claiming 10. Runs fine, but runs, you know, well back, you know, about eight and a half lengths back. Uh, so, you know, certainly not quite, um, you know, and not, not quite, you know, a dominant victory there and was a little bit of a speed favoring track and was up on that speed and still faded late. So one that I'm willing to try to play against here uh, in that regard, I thought me as majesty's a horse that I expected a little bit more out of last time out and, uh, you know, it, granted, second back from the layoff, but I, I, I'm just a little concerned that this horse might also be the product of a, a muddy sealed track. I think this horse is a horse that likes a lot of moisture in the ground. So, like I said, ultimately, where did I go? I went to Great Vision, and this is a horse twelve to one on the morning line for uh, Calvin Britton with Antonio Whitehall aboard. If this horse runs back to its August nineteenth race at Century Mile. Everybody else is running for second place. And here's the thing. This horse in this race should be the controlling speed. This is a horse that has by far and away the best early pace speed figures in the group. This is a horse that should get away well from the gate. I like the fact that this horse is making its 2023 debut, but has already recorded two five furlong works, 101 and four and a 102 and two. For this level, those are very good works. <clears throat> I think that this is a horse that, again, has a big race in him and has some big races in his past when he can be controlling speed. And I think he can be controlling speed here. I think the fact that you're only going five furlongs is a huge benefit because I think this is a horse that at six and a half gets tired. This is a horse that you can cross out the mile and a half efforts. Um this horse, if he gets to the lead, is dangerous, I think. And with Antonio Whitehall aboard, I trust that he's going to do that. So, listen, it's a little bit of a prayer going back to that one race. But that race was so good compared to what everybody else has ever done in this field. And the fractions, that's the other thing to look at. The fractions in that race are so much faster than the fractions that everybody else has run. And that was going six and a half furlongs, not even five. And so when you're looking at how these fractions are, I mean, he's going 21 and four, 44 and two. I mean, those are incredibly fast fractions to be running, even in five furlong sprints at Assiniboia. This is a horse that has legitimate speed. And I just think if he can get out there and get to the lead and breaking from the far outside, I think he can. I'm going to take a shot on a, on a big speed horse in a five furlong race. Now, from a standpoint of value, I do like the number four get up early for Blair Miller with Jorge Carreno aboard. This is one who just feels like a, a really good choice, a second back from the layoff, and is taking a little bit of a drop in class, going from a claiming 7,500 down to a claiming 5,000. Ran against a horse, Jersey Shadow, the Marvin Buffalo horse, 
uh, last time out who that horse was on a, a little bit of a winning streak at the time and just barely lost that race too. Um, you know, was in the lead, got past, fought back, couldn't quite get there. Very contested race. Um, and also it's a great jockey trainer combo uh, when Miller and Carreno team up. They're winning in a 24% clip. So that's good to see Jorge Carreno starting to heat up as well. He was at about 10% earlier this meet. Now he's up to 16% in terms of winning percentage. Like I said, I think this horse second back should really see an improvement. And I really like the guts I saw from this horse first time out, even though it ended up losing. That was, I think, a really solid uh, effort from get up early and at six to one you're getting a little bit of a price this horse should be sitting not too far off the pace but has decent enough late speed figures to figure it'll be able to sustain at five furlongs well let's go to race number five which is another five thousand dollar claimer and this one is going six furlongs though and it's for fillies and mares who are three-year-old and up and here i'm going to go with uh, a couple of horses that uh, faced off against each other last time out living sky and just for charlotte now, interestingly enough, Just for Charlotte actually beat Living Sky last time out. Yet you're getting a huge price on Just for Charlotte, which is why, from a stable duel standpoint, I would absolutely be using the number five horse in this race because it's demonstrated the ability to beat the number two horse before. But I think the number two horse is going to get maybe the right type of setup in this particular race. Living Sky for Carl Anderson, Sven Balrup. This is one that I like in this spot. I think that the the two horse here makes some sense. and two very professional outings the last two times out and finished second first time off the bench comes back finishes third by a neck in a very hotly contested race between lady creative just for charlotte and living sky that was interestingly enough a very closing friendly track that day and he was a horse that was up or she was a horse that was up on the lead so she was kind of up against the track a little bit and still managed to run really well I just think this is a horse that's kind of sitting on a good effort, three to one on the morning line. I think you're getting a good value there, actually, for a horse that uh, has some good races and has no problem going a little bit longer. Actually, that's the other thing that I like here is when you go back and look at this horse's record, five and a half, six, six and a half can run that distance. And that's not that's not a problem has turned in good efforts at that distance before. So um, can run a little bit longer. It's not going to be too much of an issue now. I do like just for Charlotte quite a bit here. The number five horse uh, at eight to one on the morning line for Jennifer Jordan uh, with uh, Nairo and Austin aboard. And <clears throat> this is one, this is a horse that came flying up late. Now, granted it was on a very closing friendly track, but came flying up late last time out. Here's the thing. You go back and look two back. This is a horse that ran up against another horse. We talked about a second ago, Jersey, uh, uh, Jersey shadow and get up early. And, that horse came flying up late on that day as well, and that was on a very fair track. And so that was a horse that made up a lot of ground in a five furlong sprint, then goes to five and a half, makes up even more ground. I think this is a horse that can make up a ton of ground late, has the best late speed figure in the field. Now we're going six furlongs. That might be a little too long for some of these horses. It's been in a lot of really good barns. Uh, I like <clears throat> the fact it started off in Marvin Buffalo's barn, has been to Tom Gardipe Jr.'s barn. Now you're in Jennifer Jordan's. I, I like this horse quite a bit at eight to one. You're getting nice value for a horse that's eight for or seven for 13 at a Cinnaboya Downs uh, career, despite this being a non winners of two race. So this horse runs honest and runs up into things. And I could see this horse absolutely turning in another really strong performance, you know, late running performance coming in there at the end. Let's go to the maiden claiming race on the card, uh, which is race number six, $7,500 maiden claimer going six furlongs for three-year-olds and up for state bred fillies and mares. This is one where I, I really like a horse. The, <clears throat> this, uh, the value play all-terrain Jane is a horse. I think I gave out last week is coming and running back again, but ultimately in this one, I, I did go to the number eight horse, <clears throat> excuse me, Milan, Ohio. And there's a couple of reasons here. One, Mike Taphorn, the trainer, five for 10 at Assiniboia Downs. That's pretty good. Uh, 50% winning right now. So you can't really go wrong with that. You get Neville Stevenson up on the mount. The two of them together, not surprisingly, are winning at a 26% clip. This is a horse that made its debut this season. It is a debut four-year-old, essentially. But makes its debut and runs sixth and doesn't really kind of show too much on a speed favoring track, but broke towards the back that day. Um, then second time out, you see a 
really nice progression. The horse breaks a little bit better, still doesn't break up on, it still breaks slow, but was close to the pace at this kind of maiden 75 state bred level. Runs a really nice race and runs second by length and three quarters. There's every reason to suspect this horse can take another step forward third time out. And I think this horse breaking from the far outside, I actually kind of really like in this spot. This horse also got in. Granted, this horse is not a, a quick horse in the regard of this is not an agile horse necessarily. Doesn't get out of the gate particularly well, but ran a five furlong maintenance work last, you know, on June 20th. So this horse has continued to get good conditioning, which is something that I really like. I think this horse can take another step forward. At seven to two, you're getting a little bit of a price here. I'm willing to give this one a shot. You know, a horse like Big Big Energy, who's the favorite, the number four horse, very honest efforts, third back in the form cycle. But again, feels like a horse that at this point now we're 0 for 6, 4 for 6 in the money. Feels like a horse that just always has an excuse and was also beaten and passed by Milan, Ohio last time out. So, you know, now we're going a little bit longer. Hard to, for me to think that Big Big Energy is going to improve, whereas Milan, Ohio, I think going to six furlongs, is actually going to be a lot better. Now, the horse that I do like here uh, as a value play is one who did just run last Monday, All Terrain Jane at six to one, taking a little bit of a class drop. You know, was rainy, was running uh, against the boys in a state uh, bred, basically maiden ten thousand dollar race. Now we're stepping down to a maiden seventy five hundred, and we're running against the the girls, and. So I think that this horse makes a ton of sense. Six to one on the morning line for Shelly Brown. Um, and you get uh, DeMario Bino aboard, who has been bringing in some prices, I will just say, and actually brought in a huge price in that race that this horse came out of. He was on another mount that day and brought in the horse Dot and Dash at a big price. And so All-Terrain Jane, like I said, makes a lot of sense here, I think. Uh, slight class drop. Might just be able to get the speed depending on, uh, you know, how things play out. Uh, but uh, you know, there's a horse on the inside rail that might, uh, who's the favorite actually, who I don't like at all in the spot, who faded from the rail last time out. Now is getting stuck on the rail again, going six furlongs. But I think All Terrain Jane is actually a horse. I know this horse has faded late. And you go, well, Matthew, at six furlongs, is this horse really going to be able to do it? I think this horse gets a little bit of a better setup. I think this horse can absolutely flash some speed. And I think this horse can hold on, even if it's just for a piece. I think this horse is, like I said, the class drop now running against uh, females for the first time, I think is a big deal. This is a horse that I would I would take a shot at, uh, at the very least underneath and maybe even as a win bet. But All-Terrain Jane is 6-1, to one, I think, is really nice value. Well, let's close things out with the final race on the card. Let's go to race number seven. And this is a, a really nice race, a $15,000 optional claimer going a mile for three-year-olds and up. And this is one where I'm going to go with the Century Mile Invader again, as I did in the uh, stakes race, the Golden Boy Stakes earlier in the card. And this is one where I like Quinto Soul, five to two on the morning line for Gonzalo Anderson, Dane Nelson aboard, same connections as you had in race number three. And this is one where, again, uh, I, I just look at what this horse has been doing recently. This horse's works have been spectacular. This horse just came out of winning a optional claimer 35,000 a century mile going a mile and winning that race easily by, uh, by um, a length and three quarters over a horse that came back to win next time out already. That was on June 17th. So this is a horse that's in very good form. And a speed figures have kept getting better. 64, 71, 77 last time out. So these are really legitimate speed figures that you're seeing. I know people are going to probably go to the hometown horse explosive as a horse that they're going to be looking at. I, I could certainly understand if you want to look at that horse. Uh, makes a little bit of sense. Is stepping up in class, though. I've been running in those claiming 10. Now you're stepping up to a claiming 15. You're going a mile. The horse can win, you know, win at that distance. It's two for six, winning four for six in the money. Uh, Quinto Soul, same record, actually, two for six, winning four for six in the money. I just think Quinto Soul has been running against a slightly higher level of competition, bigger purse money, stakes races, etc. I'm going to go with that as my top choice. Uh, and also, I wouldn't be surprised if people 
you know, go with the hometown horse explosive and maybe that price on Quinto Soul floats up a little bit. Now, in terms of a value play, I really like the number six Warriors map uh, for Jerry Gorno uh, with Praven Badri aboard. This horse that's just really solid at the distance. Seven for 11 hitting the board at this distance. Granted, only one win, but, you know, three times the second, three times third. Solid underneath play, I feel like. Ran a really nice race last time out up against uh, Magic Tiger, who I think is a pretty nice horse at this optional claiming 15 level. Now you're stretching out a little bit more. I think this horse makes a ton of sense uh, from this particular spot. Uh, and this is a barn that's been really hot lately. We talked a lot about how Jerry started out 0 for 13, 0 for 15 on this meet. Now you're seeing him turning out much, you know, more winners. You're seeing more horses hit the board. Now you're starting to see that barn heat up a little bit more. Like I said, um, you know, this is a horse that had been running at Lone Star in Houston, comes up here to Assiniboia, runs a really nice speed figure. I think there's potential progression here. Warriors map, nice horse that I'll be looking to use in the final race. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Cap in the Card. Like I said, make sure to come back on Monday night. Check out the live stream here that we have at Assiniboia starting at 8 o'clock. Press that subscribe button to get all of our great content here at Trust the Profits. Until next time, friends, my name is Matthew DeSantis, wishing you a great and profitable day at the races and reminding you that it's now post time. <laughs>